I'm going to talk about the community detection algorithms. So here is the simple problem. We are given a social network represented by a graph. Each of the nodes represents a person and two nodes are connected to each other if and only if they know it, the two people know each other. And the goal here is to chop the graph into pieces so that each of the pieces represents a community. This is an extensively studied problem because it has a lot of motivations. For instance, Facebook may use this kind of algorithm to do market segmentations. Specifically, Facebook may run this kind of algorithm to their social network, and then if, they, if Facebook discovers that two people belong to the same community, you may safely assume that they share some sort of interest. And based on this kind of assumption, then Facebook may be able to, to place more accurate, personalized ads. And also, it turns out this kind of algorithms are also applicable, applicable to networks in other contexts. For instance, people run this kind of algorithm in biological network to find the, bio, to find the proteins that can synthesize the specific kind of can cancers. And, and here we want to revisit this problem because we find there are more specific requirements in, in, in the scenario we see every day that are not addressed by existing community detection algorithms. And before I walk through those specific requirements, let me briefly talk about the general requirement of a community detection algorithm. And for the general requirement, the first thing we notice that is that the notion of community itself is a vaguely defined concept. So in order to make an algorithm work, we want the algorithm to output something that intuitively good. Which means that even without the rigorous mathematical analysis, people can tell the output from the algorithm is in high quality. That's the first requirement of the community detection algorithm. And second, we also notice that these days the social network or biological network are often in massive scale. So we want the algorithm to be efficient in the computer science sense. And finally, we want to be able to use the algorithm to reason about the quality of the output. So we want to talk about the confidence interval, the p-value of the output of the algorithms. And now let us move to the more specific requirement we find that are not met by the existing algorithms. The first thing is that we notice that in many scenarios, people in many different scenarios, people people are only interested in finding one specific community. For instance, if a local bookstore wants to sell the programming language books, then probably the, the bookstore is only interested in the community that consists of the people living living locally that are interested in programming languages. And second, we also notice that in many, in many different scenarios, uh, people have the, a lot of additional information regarding the community on top of the structure of the social network. For instance, in the scenario of the Facebook uh, example, uh, Facebook, not, Facebook not only knows the structure of the whole social network, he also knows the user's entire activity history. He knows what sort of photos the user uploads and what sort of conversation the users make with their friends. So we want to, ideally, we also want to leverage this kind of information in the community detection algorithm. And finally, we also want to be able to explicitly address the trade-off between the false positive and false negative. And here is a more concrete example that can help you to understand the problem domain. So imagine you are Facebook and you want to help a local bookstore to promote Python programming language books. So the community you are interested in is the set of all people that probably in their late 20s that resides locally that are interested in, the, in understanding the Python programming languages. So what Facebook can do is to build a sloppy, to build a sloppy classifier and run through all the users. By reading the user's profile, the classifier can output a number that indicates the likelihood the user belongs to this community. And on top of that, Facebook may also know some structural information regarding the, structure, regarding the community it wants to find. Specifically, it's very likely that the subgraph induced by the set of people in this community is connected. So the question becomes that if we are given a social network and some, some number output by the, by the classifier, as well as the structural information from the community, can we recover the community? So in other words, basically what we are given is a, a graph associated with a bunch of numbers. And then we want to use the, this, this two pieces of information to recover the community. So here there are two levels of questions. The first question is how are we going to model this kind of problem? And the second question is under the specific model, what kind of efficient algorithm can we build uh, so that that are also effective in practice? So here is the model we propose. We, we think the graph is generated from a 
random stochastic processes such as Edelstein-E random graph or the Kleinberg small word graph. And then after we see the graph, a subset of special nodes is selected as the set as the community we want to we want to detect, which are the red nodes in this graph. And each of the nodes are, is also associated with a signal that is sampled from Gaussian distribution. If the node is a red node, the signal is a positive mean Gaussian distribution. Otherwise, it's from a zero mean Gaussian distribution. Now we are given a bunch of numbers together with the graph, and our goal is to be able to recover the set of red nodes. And before we talk about our results, let us also re reiterate what's the difference between our model and the existing model. Existing model require, most of the existing algorithm require, the, the, uh, require to output all the communities within the, within the social network. Here we relax our requirement hope, so that we only want to recover one community, and we hope that this can trade us for better performance. And second, it's about the assumption we make over the structure of the community. In most of the existing work, they make much stronger assumptions. For instance, they assume the interaction within the community is much denser than the interaction across the community. And here we make a much weaker assumption. We just assume that the subgraph induced by the community is connected. And third, it's about, uh, as I mentioned, it's about uh, being able to leverage other information rather than the graph structure. Most of the existing uh, algorithm just has no way to leverage this level of information, while for our algorithm, we are able to, for our model, we are able to explicitly address this issue. And finally, it's about the structure of the graph. And here we need to make some slightly stronger assumption. In most of the existing work, they just assume they take whatever graph they see. And here we need to assume that the, the, the graph we, or the network we see exhibits some kind of stochastic structure. Now, let's talk about our main results. It turns out that this kind of problem is also very well studied in other literatures. And in fact, people, people come up with a lot of very effective heuristics that work very well in practice. For instance, an algorithm, a heuristic proposed by Balabachet just reduced this problem to the coupon collector Steiner tree problem. And our, our main result is to give, uh, uh, and also there are a lot of other relevant algorithms that use similar technique that solve the same problem. Our main result here is to give this first the theoretical justification on why this set of wide range of algorithms work in practice. And here we only focus on the algorithm that's proposed by Balabachet, but the same argument works true for a lot of other similar algorithms. So let us first walk through the algorithm by Balabachet, and then I will formalize my main, our main result. And at the end, I will talk about briefly talk about the arguments. So the their algorithm consists of three steps. In the first step, they they transform the branch of numbers into a different set of numbers. The, the way they transform the number is compute the p-value of each of the signals, and then apply the negative law functions. So this is the input of the graph, and this is the output of the first step. Um, and also, we also want to, I also want to emphasize that the negative law function here is just one possible choice, and it turns out that um, there are a, a lot of other option, options of the functions that can also make the algorithm work. So in other words, this kind of algorithm is highly robust. And in the second step, we also try to assign edges, assign costs or to each of the edges. Here, the, the way people assign costs is by, is by using domain knowledge. For instance, if this is a biological network, then the biologists they just sit there and label the costs of the edges one by one. For simplicity, let us just assume that here all the costs, costs of, the costs of all the edges are uniformly one. And in the final steps, the algorithm solves a problem called, called uh, coupon collector Steiner tree problem. And this is the, um, so what is the coupon collector Steiner tree problem? Basically, it wants to find a subtree that maximizes the difference of the numbers associated with the nodes, and uh, the, the difference of the sum of the numbers associated with the nodes, and the sum of the number associated with the edges. So for instance, for this specific subtree, the red subtree uh, presented here, the way we compute this, the, the score associated with the, the tree is, is pre represented by the formula to the right. And, and what the algorithm needs to do is to find the best subtree that maximizes the score difference. And after you find the subtree, you will just output a set of nodes in this subtree as the, the nodes in the community we want to find. And here, are our, here is our first main theorem. 
It says that if the graph is generated but from a, large, a wide range of rent stochastic processes, such as the rent addition U graph, or Kleinberg small world graph, or any other types of homogeneous graph, then with very high probability, the optimum output of the coupon collector Steiner tree problem is going to be, have very li little difference uh, to the, compared to the true community. What I mean by the very little difference is that uh, if you take the difference between these two sets, the size of the difference it grows sublinear in the size of the community we want to uh, detect. And also we, also, we, have, uh, we, have not, we have another negative result that says that if the graph is a power law graph, actually there doesn't exist any kind of algorithm that solves this kind of problem. This also justifies why we need, some, we need to add some stochastic assumptions over the structure of the graph in order to make this, this kind of algorithm work. And finally, let me briefly walk through what's the intuition behind this, this theorem. Basically, what we are going to do is to take a sub, an arbitrary subtree that's sufficiently far away from the true community. And we want to understand what's the probability the score, score associated with this subtree is going to be larger than the score associated with the true community. Then by using a standard turn-off bound, we can see that the chance that the subtree score is going to be larger than the, the community score is going to be exponentially small. And this is the first step. And in the second step, we want to argue that there doesn't exist any bad subtree whose score, whose score is going to be larger than the true community score. So we want to count the number of subtrees in this graph. And this is, and it turns out that, it turns out that when the, when the graph is generated by the addition U random graph on the Kleiber small world graph, then the number of subtrees of a fixed size is not that many. And then, our, and, then, and then that results in our first positive results. And on the other hand, if the graph is some sort of power law graph, we can show that there are a lot more this kind of subtrees, sub which makes this kind of union bound argument falls apart. And in fact, we are able to find a, a subtree which is sufficiently far away from the true community we want to find, but its score is going to be larger than the true, com the true community score. And that's the reason we have both positive, for, uh, positive results and negative results. And that concludes my talk. And thank you.